Hello and welcome to this video wherein we are going to talk about some interview questions, practical oriented interview questions. Will you attend interviews for data scientist positions, data miners, data analysts? This is a collaboration of multiple interviews which we have conducted and a lot of people whom we have spoken to in this field. Now, I want to keep this more practical scenario oriented questions. However, there are few theory questions which may be covered in these topics. Please note that for any interview, you need to be confident. And that is where this video is going to help you prepare for that kind of a stuff. Now, the first question is explain the bias variance trade-off. So be confident and always visualize some pictures. One of the pictures which you can visualize on this question and some other questions as well is this on the right. Please note that. We got this picture from this URL here. Uh, on the left hand side is the bias and on the right hand side is the variance. Bias is underfitting, variance is overfitting. Please note that very simple model are prone to high bias while some complex models are very prone to high variance. Neither high variance nor high bias is good for your model and that's why this middle line where you have to do the trade off and that is the question. Now, so bias means how well the model fits the data. That meaning the error due to the oversimplistic assumption in the learning algorithm. That means your, your algorithm is very simple. Getting more data is not going to solve your high bias problem. It's an underperforming model. However, variance on the other side is very sensitive model, meaning the magnitude of the change in the model based on the change in the data is high. And that is where you, the model is highly complex, highly sensitive. Now, simpler models are tend to be more stable with low variance, but that is the problem wherein you tend to get high bias. In order to do that, you have to get that kind of linearity wherein it's not too very complex or not very simplistic, but still you are able to get a good model. Now, a follow up question to that is uh, there is a general perception that adding more data training examples is going to fix the problem related to model performance, which is not the case. What is your take on the same? Now, from my perspective, getting more training examples can help solve high variance in case of complex algorithms, but it is not going to help you in case of high bias algorithms. That means adding more data is not going to help. Again, a follow up question to the same question can be in regards to high variance or high bias, how would you debug your algorithm? That means again, the trade off, right? So in this way, again, re visualize the diagram bias underfitting variance overfitting. And to fix the high variance, the first one is get more training examples, try some smaller set of features and try increasing the regularization parameter lambda. So to fix the high bias, try getting additional features, try adding polynomial features. That means make it more complex, right? I mean, make it more close to the data. That means try decreasing the regularization parameter lambda. Now, the fourth question is, now this is a scenario question. Now consider that you are building a spam classifier. What are the steps you would take to improve this classifier? Again, visualize it. We have taken this picture from this uh, link. Thank you. So, uh, so what are the possible steps in fixing it? First of all, please get away from the notion that getting more training example is going to help. It may not always help, right? Second is develop sophisticated features. That means look at those in innovative things using email header or looking at look up on blacklisted servers or develop some algos to process misspellings, recognize tiny URLs, synonyms. Those are the things which you can help build a good spam classifier. This is a practical question again. Now, this is another question. What is the single biggest problem with naive Bayes theorem. The naive Bayes theorem 
one of the problems which I feel is that it assumes that all the features in the data set are equally important, which may not always be the case in the real world scenarios. And that is where this, that's the biggest problem. It treats all the features the same. Next question is, in a very simple format, explain precision and recall. Two very important things. I would also add accuracy in the next one. So again, a visual picture is always gonna help as I mentioned before. So actual, that means the actual value predicted. This is a table positive, negative, positive, negative. And then let's say true positive. There are 80 cases where the actual data itself is positive and the model predicts positive. Here, false positive means the actual is negative, but the model is predict predicting as positive. That means false positive. Example, let's say out of 200, 80 out of 220. I'm just assuming as an example here. Now false negative, example 40, number, it's a number, it's a count. That means the actual is positive, but predicted is negative. And the final is, uh, true negative, that means the actual is negative, but predicted is negative as well, which is good. So you need this, these two are good, these two are not good in a classification problem, right? So what is the formula? The precision formula means true positive divided by the combination of true positive and false positive. TP is true positive and FP is false positive. And for this model, assuming 80 and 20, this is gonna be 0.8. Next is recall. Recall meaning true positive divided by a combination of true positive and false negative. This is recall. And it is 0.67. And then accuracy of the model is calculated as true positive plus true negative divided by the total. That means true positive true negative, all trues. That means actual is positive, you're predicting positive. Actual is negative, you're pre predicting negative. A combination of both, divide by the entire sample, which is 80 plus 20, 100, 60 plus 40, 100, which is 200.7. So please take this uh, picture and memorize it and understand it. And that's how you'll be able to answer precision and recall. Next question. Suppose you have been given a data set, uh, you know, a random data set, and how would you decide on which algorithm to use? How to get started? Now, please note that there is no master algorithm which can fit on any data set. So in this question, the interviewer is looking for your experience. Now, uh, looking for, um, you know, how you approach a problem. So my first approach would be get the data, try to understand the business uh, behind it, uh, try to visualize it. You know, uh, if the data shows linearity, then you know, look, choose a linear algorithm very dirty and quick. Uh, if uh, you know, if the data is not showing linearity, then you know, uh, you have to think on different uh, decision trees. For example, now if the data shows seasonality then time series obviously can be a good start. So, you know, these are the visualizations which you can put and find out. Now for non-linear non interactions, you know, talk about decision tree, uh, regression trees, black box algorithms like SVM and GBM are also good to get started with. Now, if it's a problem to do with images, audios, then obviously you all know that neural nets uh, would work the best. So this, this could be an answer. Please, you know, do not mug up, do not memorize it. Just go with the flow. Think what you, uh, you, you think and, uh, you know, be confident while you give the interview.